Hi, this is Chad, VP of Products at Slate Digital, and today we are launching Infinity EQ2, which is the first major feature update to our graphical EQ plugin. Now, unlike Virtual Mix Rack, which contains multiple modules that model the behaviors of various analog EQs, including their nonlinearities, saturations, and user interface idiosyncrasies, Infinity EQ is a WYSIWYG, a what you see is what you get style of EQ. Or is that WYSIWYG, what you see is what you hear? Regardless, our DSP engineers have gone to great lengths to ensure that the EQ curve you create on the screen is exactly what is being applied to your audio. And so let's take a look at some of the new features that have been added to this. The top one on the list, of course, is dynamic bands. Okay, put on your headphones here. We're gonna take a listen to this kick drum track. Right now, Infinity EQ2 is bypassed. Okay, so there's a lot of bleed from the snare and hi-hat here. The kick drum needs more bass, needs more of that low-end thump. But it's also got a low kind of rumble after the hit. Right, so if we turn on a bass and treble boost, we get more thump out of the kick, we get a little more clarity on the beater up at the top, but we also increase the level of the hi-hat and snare bleed, and that rumble, that rumble after the initial transient has also been amplified as well. So this is kind of like, you know, two steps forward, two steps back. I did add what I wanted to the kick drum, but I also added a bunch of undesirable effects. Now the hi-hat and snare are louder, and I'm gonna have to deal with those later in the mix. So this is where dynamics come into play. Let's go ahead and save this right now as a snapshot. And uh, we'll come to the bass band, turn on dynamics, and the threshold, so, um, or I should say the target, and the resting gain are set the same right now. So nothing is happening. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring down the resting gain. Okay, so now there's actually no bass boost happening except when the kick drum hits. And we can see that level bouncing up every time the kick drum hits. Yeah, so now we've got some additional thump, but the rumble is not being amplified. I'm gonna go ahead and increase the timing, make it a little faster and tighter. Also adjust the threshold a bit. Yeah. Right, so now it's just hitting those, those notes right there. I'm gonna do the same thing up on the snare here. Enable the dynamics. I call it the snare, it's because what I'm hearing. Um, so now uh, what we're going to do is adjust that threshold again so it really only activates on the kick hits and brings out that beater noise only without bringing up all the hi-hat and whatnot in between. So there we go. Now we've got this sound. We can listen to the other version, which was just flat before. So that's without the dynamics. Now with. So it's just a tighter, cleaner sound. We still have that bass impact turned up and we have the additional clarity on the beater turned up, but without bringing up all the noise in between. Uh, that's how you can use dynamics uh, on a kick. We can do the same thing on a snare. Uh, for example, we've got it loaded up here. Again, uh, bypassed to start with. Turn it on. So brought out a little more low end in the snare, but it's also bringing out more of the kick. So let me just switch over to the dynamic version. So this is the same thing, but now just using dynamic bands to achieve those levels of boost. So it stays a little cleaner in between the snare hits, right, without the EQ. With, yeah, there's just a little more impact on it. And I uh, got the same thing happening on the uh, overheads here. So we can take a look at one of the overheads and uh, turn on its EQ. And I'm using the dynamics to actually duck the snare out a little bit, the snare impact. So we really just only focus on the snare that's coming from the close mic. All right, so it drops it out there. So when we blend everything together, that's what we get. 
can even do a little bit on the uh, full mix. So clean up the low end a bit by bringing the bass down between the kick drum hits and also mellowing out the, the cymbal a little bit anytime the cymbal hits, this ducks a tad. Yeah, so without all that, that's what we had before. So again, no overall EQ change, only making changes with dynamics. So adding that bit of EQ just when it's required by the instrument. Very cool. Also added to Infinity EQ2 are new curve types. So when you create a band, you can now choose from, for example, band pass. You can shape it like usual. There's also now a notch, which is also fully shapeable. And lastly, there's a new tilt that's been added. And uh, this one tilts depending on whether you go up or down. So you get both, uh, just drag up or down to get the angle that you want. And you can also change the slope of it and the center point where it crosses zero. And finally, there's been a number of user interface improvements in Infinity EQ2. For example, the global curve is now under this menu up here. So when you turn that on, you'll then see this line show up, which shows the overall EQ curve created by all the bands working together in concert. There's also this option to turn off the menu on hover. So normally when you hover over something, you get this menu that pops up. If you turn that off, it won't happen. You actually have to click on a node for it to appear. There's also this option for display range in the side. Uh, right now it's set to auto, so if I happen to take something up really high, the overall scale uh, on the left changes. But if that is in any way distracting, you can just fix it to a certain range and it will never change no matter what you do. So you can set that the way you want. And also the new controls down here for moving uh, the frequency and gain and selecting which band you're editing and uh, enabling the dynamics and its parameters can be hidden. So you can just fold that away if you don't want to look at any of those controls and then maintain the full view of everything up here. And uh, we've also changed uh, the way this thing can resize. So there are two little options here. You can just change the window size as normal. But if you click here in this area, the scale, now all the components, all the UI components actually change size as well. So if you want this if you've got a really high res monitor, you probably want to control the scale and bring it up larger so all the controls are larger. Um, but you can also choose to keep the controls small and just open this up for more detail, depending on how you prefer to work. So that was a quick look at some of the new things added to Infinity EQ2. Now this plugin is available right now and it's part of the All Access Pass and Complete Access Bundle subscriptions. So if you're already a subscriber, just load up Slate Digital Connect, download the latest update, and you can start using Infinity EQ2 right now in your music. But if you're not yet a subscriber, I recommend you just head on over to slatedigital.com where you can sign up for the 30-day trial of the Complete Access Bundle. Not only will you get Infinity EQ2 and over 80 other plugins from Slate Digital, but you'll also get everything in SSL Complete, which is more than 30 plugins from SSL and Harrison Audio. And this also comes with access to the Slate Sound Sample Library, the Academy Tutorial videos, and the Virtue Assisted Mastering System. It's everything you need to just make your music sound perfect. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>